All right. Hi, everyone. And hi, Tim. So good uh -huh. to see you again today. And so we decided to meet up for another conversation today about some of the things that we started talking about last time. And we got a lot of questions and a lot of inspiration from our last conversation. So there's one question that really stood out to me. Um, somebody left a comment on our on our video and it's been so relevant, um, I think, in regards to my own journey as well. And you said the same thing about your journey, your recent journey. So um, yes. I thought it would be fun to start with that question and then just see how the conversation unfolds. So this is all about shifting into our own natural way of creating and specifically about the topic of waiting, which is so relevant. Um, we look at human design and how most people are actually designed to function and create in this world. And I'm just gonna read the question real quick. I think it'll be easier and then we'll just dive right in. Okay, so here's the question. I love the part of the conversation where you share about shifting your way of relating to your business from doing to waiting to be called to respond. It's so helpful to witness how others experience this rerouting of productivity as I find myself in the same detour right now. And I keep wondering how long will I have to wait until I get the true impulse to move forward? Thanks for this enlightening conversation. So, yeah, as we've um, kind of discussed before, and I think this is something that you shared with me too and in the session that we had together a couple months ago, um, that basically, all, like pretty much all the types in human design have to wait for something or have to kind of surrender to this this period of waiting from time to time. And... I think before we answer this question, I, I thought it might be helpful if you could share a little bit more about that for people who have no idea what we're talking about here wow. and what this can look like for the different types. And yeah. Okay, I would love to do that. I would love to do that. This was one of the um, great surprises for me early on. When I first began hosting these mirror sessions, I would spend, and still do, spend quite a bit of time meditating on the design for every single participant that I met um, in, in advance of the conversation. And I would sit with these designs, and I remember the first you know, dozen or so in particular, it seemed to me that the theme for every one of them was the same. It was a very, very dependable repeating pattern of slow down. It's like no matter what I looked at on the chart, that what was screaming up at me over and over again was slow down. A couple of things surprised me about this. First, I had been studying human design and living my own experience of it for years, and I had never really seen this pattern played out across so many designs, um, nor across so many types, you know, because here I was dealing with a lot of different types of people with many different types of authority and all of this, and it, it was the same theme, slow down, learn how to wait. And in time, what I realized is, in fact, that this theme of waiting is relevant to every type. So we can talk about the four primary types very briefly and, and what waiting looks like for each of them because while the theme plays out across the board, it plays out in variations. So we can begin, excuse the lighting, I've got like um, sun behind clouds until it's not. <laughs> um, it's pretty cool so, though. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is cool, it just, I don't, I hope it doesn't distract anyone too much. Um, okay, so generators, we'll start with generators. 70% of the population are generators. Generators are uh, living inside of this beautiful strategy of waiting to respond. That's the generator strategy, wait to respond. So life is constantly delivering options, constantly delivering options, and you're waiting to respond to those options that life delivers at your feet. And so the first step for any generator, regardless of how they're built, regardless of their giftedness and their capacity is always to wait. And the interesting thing about waiting, by the way, is it doesn't sell well, no matter who you are. 
<laughs> no one wants to wait. It's That's really so true. To wait. I was already thinking about what to, you know, what topic to choose for, or the title for this conversation. Should we call it Waiting, the Magic of Waiting, or something else? So it'll be more interesting for people to watch. <laughs> yeah, I think if you use the word waiting at all, I think people are going to wait to never watch it. Like, <laughs> no, it just, it's silly how that works. We're really built to hurry. Let me rephrase that. We're built to wait, but we're trained to hurry. Yeah, um, we, we've been programmed to hurry up and to rush. So this theme of waiting is really tough. And for the generators, the idea is you simply need to wait until there's something to respond to. Once you have something to relate to, once there's a, a capacity for response, boom, you get sucked into this wonderful flow. And the reality is you're never outside of the flow anyway, but it takes some time and waiting really to establish a reconnection to that movement. So waiting is all about becoming slow enough to feel forward into what is already happening. So that's the generator. The next batch of types are like me. You're a generator, Anna. I'm a projector, and that's the second type. The projector, 20% of the population are projectors. The projector has a strategy of waiting for recognition and invitation. So you're really waiting for someone outside of you to recognize your value and invite you into action of some sort. We're very much on the surface of these strategies, by the way, but for now you get this theme. The, the strategy itself holds the same word, wait for recognition and invitation. So where the generators are waiting for options, this display of options that life is delivering, projectors are waiting for opportunity. It's a subtle difference, but the waiting is the same. And so it's still a relationship to the outside world. It's still a relationship to the movement of life around you. But instead of flowing forward on this current of life, it's like you're being drawn forward and you're waiting to feel that call of your own destiny. And so still waiting. It's like, okay. Whoa, someone's not waiting back there. So sorry. Just, just give me a second. No problem. No problem. So sorry about that. I had a feeling this would happen, even though it hasn't happened in a really long time. Once Very she, okay. When she was a puppy, she would do this like every single time I had a call with somebody. But anyway, I hope that's it. Yeah, that's very okay. I heard you say sit and I heard Bella say, I don't wanna. <laughs> She's very stubborn. She doesn't like to listen. Um, okay, catching our breath, returning to the moment. Uh, shall we continue? Yes. Okay, so we've seen the generator, we've seen the projector. Let's skip ahead to the reflector. This is a really primary take on the waiting theme because the strategy for a reflector, reflectors, by the way, are exceptionally rare, about 1% of the population. Um, but the strategy for the projector is to wait out a full lunar cycle. There's a lot of technical detail around this we're not gonna get into in this conversation, but again, the theme of waiting, in their case, waiting a month. Ooh, ouch. Yeah, sorry, you reflectors. Um, but waiting is there. It's, um, it's a movement of perspective through time. That's what waiting really is. There's a lot to talk about on waiting, but for now, I'll stay focused. So that's the reflector. Now, here's the real trick, the real um, the bug in the mix, the, the surprise for me. Manifestor types. Manifestor types are often spoken of as these bulldozers, the ones who can initiate and do, who can take action and express without any need from, like, need of invitation or response or anything like this. But it struck me on the very first manifestor that I ever uh, hosted a mirror session for that manifestors have to wait too. Manifestors have to wait for the inspiration or the impulse to go create something. And so they're feeling forward into what that is too, just like the rest of us. And so there's not all that much of a difference between the types when it comes to their relationship to waiting. It's all, it's all takes on a theme. And beyond the types you have the inner authorities. And there are multiple different types of inner authorities, but the same story applies here as well. For instance, emotional authority. 51% of the population have an emotional authority, including manifestors. So of that 8% of manifestors that exist, 4% of them have to wait out the emotional wave. They have to wait out the emotional wave. And so here is, you're waiting for emotional clarity. Um, mental types, mental projectors, for instance, um, they have to wait for mental clarity. They actually have to have a bunch of conversations and they have to feel over time what their truth is. Uh, reflectors, their inner authority is the same way. They actually have to kind of establish a mental, like a cognitive and physical link until over time they're able to get a sense for what's their own. 
And so over and over and over again, whether you're looking at type or you're looking at inner authority, the way that we relate to experience is always going to require us to take enough time to feel what's happening. I'll pause there. What do you think, Anna? It's definitely true. And I mean, it's such a huge topic. I actually, I mean, you know that, but I have emotional authority. So I have this topic, not just for my strategy, but also just for my authority. And mm -hmm. It's been really interesting to explore this, especially this year and kind of seeing how I've shifted back into that space where I feel I can actually wait long enough to get the right impulses. And I've mm. been reflecting a lot on my journey over the past 10 years or so. And I kind of see now kind of getting back to the question we got from our viewer. There have been different times in my life. There have been times when I think I was, you know, holding back too much and I was waiting too long also. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's kind of an interesting thing to look at for the generators too, because we do have, like, we have the waiting, but we also have responding. So I yes. think what can also happen is that we wait too long to respond. And yes. I think that's one thing I often did in the past. I never really had to wait for the impulses, like the impulses kept coming, but I wasn't responding to the impulses. Yes. And so in the beginning stages of my journey, I think, it was often much more about listening to the impulses and actually then surrendering and then taking action based on what I already knew and had known for a long time what I needed to do. And yes. then things just started unfolding very quickly. And I think more recently, I've had several years on my journey where I was more in that theme of holding on. Um, let's say okay similar but i guess simultaneously holding on to something that wasn't healthy for me but mm -hmm. also trying to force it to happen like forcing it to continue or trying to figure things out and trying to figure out a way to make it happen even though it wasn't really what i wanted deep down and in that sense i think i wasn't really trusting my emotional authority and um I mean, that's a long, long story, but basically like quite a few years ago already when like when after I left Europe with all my belongings and and I started traveling, I just went through a lot of let's say it was an, an intense healing journey. Mm. And I went through a lot of trauma, like revisiting childhood trauma and then things coming back up, especially in my relationships. And like, it was pretty extreme. I really just, I wasn't able to trust myself anymore just because I was giving so much of my power away to other people and, and looking for answers outside of myself and just kind of trying to cope with <laughs> what I was going through emotionally. And so I disconnected, I started disconnecting from my emotions because I guess a lot of it was so painful. I didn't want to feel it. And, yes. Um, that in combination with looking for answers where I couldn't really find them. Um, mm. So I guess, yeah, we talked about this last time, what, what I really did eventually, maybe a couple years ago, when I realized how disconnected I had become, I started reconnecting with my body and, and just really paying attention to what I was feeling in my body. And I, I just... Um, I made a commitment to myself to just trust what I was feeling in my body versus the doubts that were coming up in my mind. And I just kind of made that leap and then things started falling back into place. Um, and I think since then I've, I've been able to reconnect with my emotional authority more. Um, I guess giving myself the space to wait when I need to. Mm -hmm. But I think over time, the more I've learned to trust, the more it's also just become more of a, a sense of being in the present moment and, and just trusting what I'm feeling in the present moment, not so much focusing on, you know, what, what needs to happen in the future, kind of, you know, trying to make a decision about what I need to do is kind of 
making a decision about what I'm doing right now in this present moment and then trusting that the next step will come and the next step will come. Yes, beautiful. That's, that's been the journey for me this year, I'd say. And it's just made everything so much easier. Beautiful. I love that. And you know what? You, you open the door to something interesting, which is an expansion on the theme of waiting. There are certain synonyms that we run into often as you begin to slow down enough to connect to the idea, even just the concept of waiting. And one of those themes is surrender. You know, surrendering. And each of the different types has something that they're surrendering to as well. Um, again, all of them have to surrender, different takes on the same theme. And for a generator, the appropriate position of surrender is to be surrendered to the now moment. Now, and then in the next now, and then the next now, over and over again, you're feeling forward. So what that awakens for me is an understanding of the real value of waiting. Ultimately, waiting is about giving ourselves enough time to feel. We think it's a mental activity. We think we, we're driven by the mind to go forward. And so we say, I must wait. And so we force ourselves to be patient, which is very, it's manufactured, it's artificial. It's, it's like, it takes a lot of effort and generally is impossible to sustain. But what we're dealing with here is not a mental action so much as an embodied one. You talked about coming into the body. Waiting is all about coming into the body and feeling our way forward. That's the point. As we get better and better and better at doing that, we have to wait out less and less and less time. Um, it's quite magical in that regard. And we're built this way. And I actually mean that this time. We are, we are designed this way. So it's most natural for us to feel our way forward in life. We just haven't known it. And especially as adults with decades of experience backing this idea that we have to figure things out, it takes quite a bit of retraining to slow down enough to deepen into that space of our own physical systems and the feeling, the sensory relationship to our own lives. Does that make sense? Mm, absolutely. And like one thing I've been thinking about is also in regards to the question that we got from our viewer, um, you know, is there a way to accelerate the process? And mm. so that's been kind of an interesting journey as well. I think you kind of, touched on it a little bit already um it's this paradox i feel when we <laughs> when we think we don't have time to wait or we don't have time to slow down that's exactly when we yes give ourselves space to slow down yes and i've been reflecting on like what exactly i did to get myself back into this space and so I think one thing that's really important, maybe this is especially true for the generators, but um, you can correct me if that's not the case. If you don't know what to do, for me, it's always been a matter of simply following my joy, like just doing whatever I enjoy in this moment, especially let's say if it, if it comes to figuring out the next step in my business, for example, I, like for a while I just didn't know and then I was feeling that frustration you know because I was trying to force things to happen or or kind of holding on to something that just wasn't aligned anymore and I was miserable <laughs> like I was just feeling depressed <laughs> and yes. feeling so much resistance and something really changed when when I gave myself permission to just let that go and just stop trying to force things and like immediately i could feel the shift in my energy and even though i didn't know exactly what i was going to do i just gave myself permission to just go and do what what i enjoyed doing or what what i felt inspired to do in that moment even if it wasn't even business related sometimes yes and then things started changing so quickly and I think then I was also able to let go of that fear that was keeping me from receiving mm -hmm. um, the opportunities that just, you know, came very gently. And it was a small step in the beginning, but just something happened that I then followed. And then the next thing came, and the next thing came. And I got all the things that I needed to relax into my space of patience and stillness even more where i was really able to i guess not just receive the opportunities but also you know hear 
<laughs> yes. listen to what was really coming through more on a soul level. It's been a really beautiful journey. It's perfect, Anna. It's perfect. And people need to hear that story because what it, what it demonstrates is that the path is not necessarily a uh, simple or an easy one. Um, but it is a rewarding one. The conversation that you and I are having is not focused on success or um, even specific reward so much as a deeper fulfillment. You know, we chase a lot of things in life and we're trained to. And you and I have both kind of achieved that ultimate end to gather the very thing we were after only to find that there was nothing fulfilling in it, which has led both of us in our own way to this inner journey, this deeper question of how do we access true contentment and fulfillment in life? And does it have anything in particular to do with specific things at all? So something that comes to mind for me is the same paradox, maybe a different way of describing the paradox that you just demonstrated, which is that as we slow down, I like to think about slowing down. I'll, you'll often see me do this movement. There's a lot of frenetic energy up here in the conceptual space of our minds. It's moving, it's fast, it's driving us in all directions, and we are lost to that. Generally speaking, most modern humans are lost to this frantic pace. So it's all up here, and the point is to slow it down, lower that frequency, and bring it down into the space of our experience. I talk about the body. I'm talking about the physical form, and I'm talking about the body of our experience. What's happening up here is all conceptual. It's false. It's made up. It's illusory. It's ideal. What's down here is real. Okay, so we bring it down, and the more we slow down, what's happening is we're actually we're coming down, it's like we're growing roots into our own existence as human beings. We're becoming human again, ultimately. So it's a very physical process. It's all about the body. This is something I'll say over and over and over again. It's all about the body, it's all about the body. It's about becoming embodied. So it comes down and the more we slow down, the more we ground ourselves in that space, it's like, it's like the root system opens up, okay? This is the way, I'm just playing out the way I visualize it, right? And so something deep opens. And as this, this fullness comes into our experience, we're slowing down, but we're experiencing more. So fullness always equals more. We take in more, we feel more, we're more sensitive, we experience more, more opportunities, more resources, more life, more joy, more fulfillment. So fullness always is equivalent to more, but more is not always equivalent to fullness. There's really something to contemplate in that. You and I are talking about slowing down, and the more we slow down, the more we take in, and the more we experience, the more benefit there is. And that feeling of more, it feels accelerative. It's exponentially accelerative because it's a holographic system. It goes in all directions and all dimensions. When we're aiming at one thing, and then you attain that one thing, there's nothing there. It's a puff of smoke. But when we come down and we allow that more to fill us up, then what we're activating is exponential growth deep fulfillment. So it's really, it's, it's a trick. It's, it's um, true alchemy, honestly. Mm. One word that really comes to mind here is gratitude, the magic mm -hmm. of gratitude. That's definitely something right. I've been embracing this year too. And I see that, um, you know, I've been kind of experimenting with different kinds of energy work and you know, sometimes doing my shadow work and sometimes just not doing the shadow work at all and just focusing entirely on gratitude and, and seeing the differences between what happens. And even though sometimes I feel it's, it's necessary or it's helpful to do the shadow work, um, let's say when I'm already emotionally triggered and I'm just in this mental space where I can't see the truth, or I, I just can't figure things out, um, sometimes it's helpful to see the connections to, for example, what I experienced as a child and then just how, seeing that as a way to look past the illusion and coming yes. back to the truth. Um, but there are times when I really don't need to do that and I, I feel I can really just completely be in the space of gratitude for what I'm experiencing right now and it builds so much momentum. And this year I've had actually a lot of times when that was just self-perpetuating like a, a, I was in this space for, for weeks and weeks and weeks and I, I didn't really have to worry about doing a lot of clearing or 
you know, what are my blocks or anything like that. Oh, okay. And I do find when we look for the blocks and we find them, right? And then yes. we find more of those too because we experience what we focus on in a lot of ways yes. too. Um, and the grounding, I think that's that's a really important thing too. That's actually something I wrote down yesterday too in my notes. Um, if you're waiting for the impulses or like if you feel you don't have space, the mental or physical or emotional space to trust, to like fully relax into the waiting. I think that's something that was really important for me too last year when I started making this shift. It was really a root chakra thing to start with. I had to just make it a point to, and this might be different for different people because I've been in other situations too. It wasn't that. I just really needed to give myself permission to go for what I wanted and go for the thing that um, I was calling me. But I think I was, I was holding back because there was so much fear and I, was, I just never found this place where I could be completely grounded. Mm. And I didn't feel safe, so I kept running. <laughs> And I wanted to accelerate time by running and, and yes. moving faster. And actually, that's not what I needed. But I needed to create that space where I felt safe enough to relax into that waiting space. And when I realized that, of course, I started attracting the opportunities that allow me to do that. And um, I just got the kind of support that I needed. And then things really started speeding up like very quickly. And yes. I think that's that's an important point to make. Like no matter where you are in your journey, if you feel like you're in the space of wanting to shift into your more natural way of creating and, and having that space to wait. Um, that's something that I, I wasn't always paying attention to on my, on my journey. Um, just always make sure that, you know, you are in the space where you can be grounded and that you take care of your needs first yes. and you know all the the basic needs are met i feel this is this is really important i mean it's on the on the level of grounding and it can also be done on a more spiritual level where you just reconnect with the truth of who you are and and you know remembering that you don't really need to be afraid and that you have access to everything you need in each moment but i yes. really had to do both Mm. Really important, Anna. Um, something came up for me while you were speaking. I think it might be useful for our listeners to, if we go a little deeper into what we mean by waiting, because you've made a distinction here. You made a distinction between um, waiting and procrastination, for instance. I think most people, when they hear words like waiting, um, even words like trust, definitely words like surrender, words like relaxation, um, there is a perception of these ideas that immediately swings to limpness, procrastination, laziness, okay? I wanna be clear that that's not what we're talking about. It's interesting, the shadow, anytime there's a shadow in front of a concept, the shadow is going to allow you to see it in one of two ways, either um, through a repressive lens or through a reactive lens. So let's hold the theme of waiting behind the veil of a shadow one of two things is what we'll see. The repressive vision is going to be that of procrastination and laziness. And so, oh, I'm supposed to wait will become, you know, just becoming kind of a slob. <laughs> and that's the repressive dis uh, expression of that idea of waiting. It's not what we're referring to. The reactive side, of course, is impatience. Wanting to wait and refusing. You react to the idea of waiting and you hurry forward. But there's always a third option, and that third option is always the most challenging to grasp because we've been trained to see through the lens. And once you remove the veil, you recognize that waiting can in fact be, get this, this is a fun phrase, waiting can in fact be, I wrote it down, hang on, ah, yes, an active state of awareness. I like this. Waiting as an active state of awareness. I didn't make that up. Actually, what that comes from is the fifth gate in the human design chart. So the fifth gate is uh, moving up towards the identity center from the sacral center. The fifth gate is the gate of waiting. So there's a lot to learn on this theme th through the fifth gate. And ironically, before we decided to talk about this today, I had been contemplating the fifth gate. 
So the fifth gate of waiting is waiting as an active state of awareness. Well, what does that mean? What does it mean to be so alert and engaged with your experience and yet call it waiting? It means feeling, that's what it means. This is not just a mental, a mental engagement. This is, a, this is a physical embodied experiential uh, relationship to your life. So waiting is not boring. Waiting is not inactive. It's not even unproductive. Waiting is connecting to your experience so directly that you become an active participant with what's already happening instead of arguing with it and going your own way because dot, 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 fill in the blanks. There's another, um, in the fifth line of the fifth gate, there's a theme of waiting as an aspect of enlightenment. Ooh, think about that. There's a real key here in this idea of waiting. It's no joke. The irony, and I don't think you even know this, Anna, so I'll just, I'll share this because it's fun. This fifth gate is activated in my design. And when you overlay this in the gene keys, that particular uh, story, the fifth gene key in this case, is held in the core wound sphere. So this theme of patience and impatience, it's like extremely primary in my experience, the shadow of impatience and the gift of patience. And the beauty of that being held in the core wound sphere is that that core wound within this gene keys context, over time, it, it, um, the wounded pattern is healed. And what emerges as a result is your vocation. And so my vocation, what I am here to express and to share with the world, how amazing that we're having this conversation now, what I'm here to express is this theme of patience and what it can mean in real life and what its value truly can be. Pretty fun, huh? Mm. It's so beautiful and definitely resonates with my own experience too. I, I don't know. I, I don't think I have the fifth gate activated. I, I'd have to look it up, but um, definitely learning patience has also been a theme for me and I've explored this in so many different ways and from so many different angles in my life. Um, maybe for me, it's been more of a, a matter of breaking free from the conditioning because I think a lot of us have this type of conditioning where I mean, you've talked about it before. We think we always have to be in action and we always have to rush because otherwise we're lazy or not productive enough or our boss won't be happy <laughs> um, or we won't um, meet our deadlines and things like that. And it's been a really interesting shift for me over many, many years, actually, um, when I first embarked on this journey of just fully surrendering to the path that was my soul was calling me to. It was really challenging in the beginning because I had no idea how to create from this space. Like I was very much in, in my masculine forward moving energy. And now the new path that I was following, that I was choosing had a lot more to do with my feminine qualities. And I, you know, I start, got started as an intuitive and intuitive healer reader. And so I got this opportunity to really explore my feminine essence more. And with that, it wasn't just the work that I was doing, but also the way I was creating my life. But I had never really experienced it in this way before. And I didn't feel safe doing that because I, I had no idea. Like I just, all I knew was that what I had done so far, for example, what had worked for me in my previous business wasn't working in the same way anymore. I, mm -hmm. I couldn't apply those same strategies anymore. You know, the planning and, and and then just you know hustling 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 to to build that thing and then eventually getting somewhere it was so much more of a a journey of surrender and then facing all the fears that came with that and it's it's taken me so many years to to really get that difference or to get to a point where i i feel i can do that you know i can be in my in my space of surrender and feminine flow without then going into the opposite where i'm just you know being lazy I, like laziness isn't really something that happens for me a lot but but i guess for me it was more of a matter of maybe giving my power away too much or um, yes. i see that a lot in the spiritual community um, we have those ideas of 
divinity and uh, maybe a higher authority that is expecting us to do something or that will somehow, I mean, we're all connected to something greater than ourselves and we're all part of that. But um, I think there's a lot of that maybe religious conditioning from the past where we think, uh, you know, we don't have the power or we have to wait for something outside of ourselves to give, give us permission. Um, I mean, there are so many layers here, but one thing I, I just realize is that I was sometimes in this place where I thought I was surrendering, you know, I was surrendering to my path, but actually I was just, I was not in this space of awareness where, where I was really feeling, getting back to what you said, I was disconnecting um, by, well, I guess looking for this, this space of this internal space of relaxation. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, and that can happen. Like, I think a lot of us, you know, maybe we think, for example, meditation is a really good tool to come back to inner peace, but sometimes it's re really helpful, but it can also lead to the opposite where we just disconnect from, from the world and, and from feeling and kind of using that to, I guess, create this artificial space where we think we are at peace, but actually there's, yeah, this disconnect from from what's actually happening or wanting to happen in our lives and and really being in the experience of life itself. Mm -hmm. So I think that's been really important for me to come back into my body again and, and then um, being present and, and allowing myself to feel so exactly what you said. Um, just seeing that distinction between when we're just kind of passively going with the flow and not participating in life and when we're really willing to be present with what is and still being in that space of awareness okay now i lost my train of thought but i think you know what i'm trying to say here yes. just making that distinction between being passive and and surrendering but still having an active role in, in that surrender yes I totally hear what you're saying and you're totally right. And it's important to note for anyone listening that we've been trained um, to act in direct opposition to what's natural for us. This is common. And this is just about, this is true for just about anyone in today's world and civilization as we know it. So we've become unnatural. And in order to find our way back to what is natural, it can be a bit of a trial and error process. And so it's not, it's not like you just click into place, you have to feel for it. And it takes a bit of actual laziness, you know? But here's the truth. When you come back to your nature, there is no such thing as laziness. And, and I'm gonna say something here, which, you know, I'm not, I don't know, a biologist or something, but I believe this to be true, that there is no such, la no such thing as laziness in um, an appropriately functioning organic system. There's a significant difference between being at rest and being lazy. And so we move the same way when we come back into this position of what's natural for us. When I, I refer to our nature with a capital N. You know, we will move in and out of activity. We will come to moments of rest. And when that happens from that position of what's natural, it's no longer called meditation. It's no, no, no longer called anything. It's just what Tim's doing now. You know, just like when I stand up to go do something, move into a conversation, use the bathroom, make tea. That's what I'm doing, you know? And so there's this beautiful, um, there's this gracefulness really to meeting life on that level. Um, I may have something useful. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know if, <laughs> if I would be prepared to share this on, on today's call. And I want to at least, uh, like ask permission before I go into something I've been theorizing that may be useful, I think, for our listeners. Do you mind if I nerd out for a moment? I'm 100% sure it will be extremely useful, so go ahead. <laughs> Please. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I've been thinking about what it means to exist in this active state of awareness, um, specifically in regards to how it addresses these feelings of stuckness. You talk about how you really want to get to that place where you have this natural ease about creation. But there's a lot of stuff in the way. 
a lot of layers, a lot of shadows, a lot of challenges. And so as we move through our day, no matter how good we're doing, we hit these obstacles and we become stuck. So what I've been doing, a little, a little technical here for a moment. When you're looking at the human design body graph, there's all these lines connecting up all of the centers. And all of these lines, they're known as channels. They exist on um, sequences of channels known as circuits. So there are all these different circuits. They call them energy families. And these different energy families have specific themes and challenges and gifts that they hold. I don't know that I've ever heard anyone really talking about it this way. So just bear with me. I'm, I'm, you know, this is coming alive inside of me. We're a little kind of off to the side of human design at this point, but we're using it as a lens. So what I have been playing with is mapping the circuitry um, to identify what those specific challenges or feelings of stuckness might be based on how any given individual is wired. Okay. And so we run into these different themes. I've written some down. Um, there's the, uh, the feeling of stuck in melancholy or sadness. There's the feeling of stuckness in emotional or experiential loops, feelings of stuckness in mental knots, feeling of stuckness in relational discord, um, self-criticism, and all these different ways that we get ourselves tangled up like pretzels. And, and life is moving beautifully and then you hit this wall. So what can we do really to serve that moment, right? What can we do to relax the system again? What we're aiming for is an alert relaxation and we're doing good until we hit a wall. So what's left? So what I've done is I've basically taken each of these different energy families and I've identified um, what I'm calling, well, what I'm calling right now anyway. I don't know if this is the name or not. Uh, I'm calling them body keys because these are, these are, you know, if you're stuck, you're locked, you need to be able to unlock what's happening and, and regain this flow. So these body keys are all embodied um, tools that we can kind of lean into. Um, some of them include um, the soundscape of your environment, music and silence, um, activity, some form of physical activity. I'll give you an example for myself, washing dishes and uh, vacuuming the house, mowing the lawn. These are really mundane activities, but they involve my body and they bring me back into form when I'm stuck. Um, other examples might be um, organization, organizing your space or organizing your thoughts. This, this specifically maps to the logical circuitry. Uh, privacy, that's a big one. There are certain types that require personal space. And um, touch, this is another really powerful one, physical touch, um, specifically nurturing and affectionate touch. So all these different ways that we can engage with our world and actually set ourselves up to engage with our world that help to break the trance. Now I've mapped this and I found on the other side of all of this that there are these beautiful gifts that emerge as we allow ourselves to relax. And so out of melancholy and sadness, you have this deep capacity for creativity. Amazing. What, what a gift to find on the flip side of that coin, right? And out of self-criticism, there's this gift of gentleness. And out of those emotional and experiential loops that we get caught inside of and can't seem to complete, there is fearlessness. And on and on it goes. And so we find these ways of mapping individual systems to identify basically a personalized energy medicine for meeting those moments of stuckness. And we're waiting, but we're very active in the waiting as we engage our experience in a way that has nothing whatsoever to do with building a business or fixing anything. It's just about catching our breath. Makes so much sense to me. And yeah. a lot of the things that you just shared, like the very practical action steps that you mentioned, these are actually all things that, you know, I, when I look back at my own journey, I kind of see the themes and I look at, like in retrospect, what action steps I took to create those changes in my life. And they're actually part of my, a lot of these are part of my signature system that um, like I'm not really teaching actively so much right now, but um, have been like part of all of my coaching programs and everything I've done with my clients and that I continue to apply for myself over and over again. Um, like clearing space, that's usually when I don't know what else to do, that's always the first thing I do. Clearing space, organizing my space, cleaning up my desk, cleaning the house. Um, it just sets so much energy free. and. Yes. Um, 
like I'm super, super aware of this now and I do this very actively, like on a continuous basis. I like I pretty much do this every day now, just in some shape or form. It doesn't always have to be like two hours of cleaning. <laughs> be something like um burning some sage in the morning and, and like just keeping my energetic space clear. I've been so so mindful of this this year and I, I see just with all the shifts that I've made, I've become a lot more sensitive and I, I need to keep my space clear, even the physical and energetic space, so I can do my work without um you know, feeling like super overwhelmed or just getting stuck in those, um, I guess, anxieties or emotional <laughs> loops, whatever it is. Um, yeah. So that's that's definitely been, that's, that's an important one. And movement too. Yes. That's another one. Like I'm somebody, I, I have, when I'm in my natural state and I, I'm really connected and, and um, I put my energy into the right things, like I have so much energy. <laughs> yeah, of course. I need to move. Um, yeah. So I, I go out into nature every single day. If I don't, if I miss a couple of days, I feel it immediately. Yes. And there's something interesting that somebody said, like many, many years ago, I was attending a, was like a conference or an event in Vancouver right after I came back to Canada and 2012 i think it was the day after i came back and this guy mentioned something very interesting he said basically you can accelerate time through movement so <laughs> i've really been been observing this when i when i feel stuck and i don't know what to do like maybe i've already done the space clearing but i'll just go for a walk <laughs> and the blocks whatever blocks i'm feeling just kind of tend to resolve themselves and I get inspiration or maybe I come back home and then whatever I've been waiting for is there. You know? Yes. So, yes. That's perfect. Mm. And, and the thing is, I'm not surprised that this has proven itself to you to be useful. Mm -hmm. And I'm not surprised that it's a part of the system that you've helped others with because it was a part of mine too. The exciting step forward for me with all of this is that we get to individualize it based on design. And so hearing what you're describing, I'm just looking at your design going, of course, you know, because that's precisely what I would prescribe for you, movement. Um, and it would be movement in a specific relation to texture and your soundscape. So I imagine you going for a walk in the woods and savoring the bird song and the sound of the wind in the leaves. And you're probably the sort of a person who is going to pet your dog often and touch the trees and marvel over the sensory contact with moss. You know, I've been hugging trees like crazy. <laughs> it's actually how you're designed. It's, it's designed. It's what I'm trying to say is it's designed to bring you back to yourself. That's what I'm trying to say. That's remarkable. So anyway, that's what I'm excited about. And, and you have these three specific keys, which I'm wrapping into a formula and getting excited about but you've you we kind of cheated because you said it first but i i swear i saw it first too <laughs> oh man so this i'm very excited about and i think that our our listeners can also afford to get pretty excited about it too there there are ways to bring yourself back to what's natural and once you have your life it's remarkable your life slows down even as it speeds up what slows down is the frantic rushing and the way that you're um, giving yourself away to all of these activities and conversations and relationships that have nothing really to do with your heart. And as it slows down, more space is opened up for who you are and what you're here to do and deliver and create. And you will produce more by doing less than you could ever anticipate at the start of a conversation like this. But if you're courageous enough to start playing with it, you'll find out absolutely this has definitely been my experience um especially this year again and i've seen it so many times over and over again in my life but this is something i've really had to surrender to this year you know i've already shared some of this with you but um i was just in a in a place around the beginning of this year toward the end of last year where i knew okay something needed to change 
I didn't know exactly what to do. But one thing I knew was that I just, I needed to be really mindful of what I was putting my energy into. I just had to stop, you know, just randomly trying out different strategies. And, and <laughs> I mean, that's what I was doing for a while. I was just kind of jumping from one thing to the next and because I wanted to really figure it out. And yeah, of course. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't do it this way. Um, and I got to this point where I knew, okay, these are the resources that I have right now. I just really got to take care of what I have and just use what I have. And, and I got back into this, into this space of presence, um, actually inspired. Like, I, I mean, it's been a long journey, but I just remember this one day in, I don't know, maybe February or March, um, one weekend, I just, I remembered something that I had read in a book by Eckhart Tolle. And I don't even remember exactly what it was. Oh, yeah, it it's actually comes back to the fulfillment that you mentioned earlier in our conversation, which I think is so, so important. Um, like we have to go beyond just trying to figure out solutions or fix problems. I mean, we can get there, we can find solutions, we can fix problems, or we can achieve something that we think we want. But as long as we're looking for things externally then we'll always find when we get there something's missing and yes. I think that's really been the journey too for me for the last couple of years just reconnecting with with that place within myself where it's not just about surviving it's it's really yeah. something more and and something just clicked um, I don't remember exactly what I read but I think maybe it was about finding your purpose and and something just clicked all of a sudden i f i felt this peace within myself where i just knew okay i don't need to worry i, I know everything's going to be fine and i don't remember my initial thought <laughs> what oh, were we talking that was about? a beautiful thought that alone that's a huge key can i vibe on that for a minute sure <laughs> maybe whatever whatever else i wanted to share will come back but please go ahead okay trust 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 this is really powerful i i remember on my own gene keys profile i have a note it says patience as a field of trust patience exists as a field of trust but there's a there's a marked difference between patience and being patient and this is what we're really talking about today we can force ourselves force ourselves for a period of time to be patient it's not natural for us, it's not easy. We can make ourselves be patient. I'm gonna make myself wait. But ultimately what we're aiming for is something softer and easier and extremely natural. That's what patience is. And patience is um, not imposed. Patience is a state of being. And it's a state of being held in a field of trust. Why can I be patient? Why is it that Tim, after all these years of working so hard and searching as if his life depended upon it, why is it that I get to experience any part of peacefulness inside? It's because I am beginning to learn truly what it means to be patient. There's nothing I'm waiting for. You know, when you're being patient, you're being patient for something, but patience exists as a total reality. There's nothing to wait for because you're centered in the happening right now. And that's the beauty of the body. It's the beauty of fulfillment. Everything comes back to this moment centered in the spine centered in this now moment that's your genius anna but it's all of ours patience is about becoming available to what is current and real and in that space as you activate that gift of patience you actually connect to the ultimate essence of this story which is timelessness there isn't even such a thing there's no need to concern ourselves with time when everything is held in the beauty and the magic of right now and then we are allowed to be surprised by each new moment over and over and over again. And very quickly, as a result of this patience, this trust, the experience of one's life becomes <laughs> the most grand adventure. And that's not a cute thing. I'm not trying to be romantic. It is an epic adventure. But it takes some time to relax enough to feel it as such. There. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. This is so true. And that's definitely a re realization that I had at some point on my journey. You know, maybe initially it was more about 
the external things that I wanted to create in my life. And I mean, all those things are important and those were all I mean, heart and soul desires that were calling me, like being free to travel, um, coming back to Canada, for example, or um, a different kind of work and all those things that were calling me. But I think patience is, is such an important key here. And, and what you said, I think is so true. I've seen that so many times. Like there's actually a difference between what I usually call waiting and, and patience. It's, it totally is that being in that space of trust. Like when you're waiting for something, you're kind of waiting for something outside of you to come and yeah. save you. Yeah. Good. And yes. You can't relax until it happens. But when you're patient, when you're really in this energy of patience, you're actually in that space of trust where you just know it'll happen you know it'll happen i already know it's it's done and i don't need to worry about it i can just relax and enjoy whatever is happening in this moment yeah and it's even it's even not so much that it will happen it's that it is happening it's what you were saying about gratitude everything everything with a capital e is happening right now so patience is about opening the eyes of wonder to recognize just how magical our experience is. And then naturally out of that comes gratitude. The fact that we get to be alive as these human beings that we are, that we get to open these eyes and wake to a new day, to a fresh beginning over and over again, over and over again. It's remarkable. We are reborn every moment. That's a gift. It's a, it's a, it's a thrill. We get to be captivated by that story. But it's like you said, it's held in gratitude. We're using words that all mean the same thing. Surrender, gratitude, trust, patience. It's all, it's all like a nested reality. And it's something that's held as feeling. It's an experience. It's not an idea. As we're describing it, it's an idea. But the way that we've lived it and continue to and will continue to live it more and more, it's everything. Mm, totally. And there's just one more thought that, that really came up. Um, the, the idea of instant manifestation, that's the realization that I had at some point, actually, that's what I was really looking for, yes. you know. I mean, when we, when we wait for something to happen in the future, we work towards something that we want to create um, that will some, you know, we think will happen sometime in the future as the result of the effort that we're putting in yes. um, versus being in this present moment so much and realizing that i mean we are an eternity there's the timelessness that you mentioned um i mean it's a journey that never ends so the trick really is to learn to enjoy the journey and, and be in the present moment so much that then like that is the instant manifestation that's kind of where everything is happening right now and then it also manifests phys physically in that way. I mean, I've, I've seen it happening so many times, um, especially when I was traveling. You know, I, I had hardly anything. I had just very few belongings, and I was so focused just on the journey and, and whatever I was experiencing in the moment. And it was crazy what I experienced on this journey. You know, there can be, a, you know, there are a lot of challenges that can happen when you're traveling especially when you're all by yourself and, mm. and, you know, in places where you've never been before and I mean, so many, so many things that happened. But one thing I realized was that like, no matter what challenge I ran into, the solution was always right there. You know, maybe I just got kicked out <laughs> somewhere. Oh, it happened yeah. a couple of times and maybe in the past, you know, when, maybe when I was looking for a new place, I remember, you know, like, 10 15 years ago when i was looking for a new place to live it would take me months sometimes to find a new place and now i was in a, this totally different reality where i was so present i had to respond to everything in the moment and just trust and be open to the possibility that everything is available to me right now and so okay i got kicked out there's a new place already there you know it's I might not always know right in this moment what to do, but I just have this, this connection to trust that 
I just know I, I need to, you know, I need a solution now and it's there it, it, it just happens so quickly. Um, so many times, like I'd get rides from people who happened to be in that area, like friends who happened to be in that area wow. <laughs> to be at the same event on that same day. And then they could give me a ride to, you know, another place in, in Los Angeles. That, that's one thing that happened. I, I was staying with a friend and she kicked me out. And then, <laughs> and then the next day it was already pre-scheduled, you know, I had, I was going to meet up with, with friends and all the connections were there. So and this happened so many times, like, it's not even, you, you can see, like, you can really see it's no coincidence. You can really yes. see that it just works every single time. Yes. And what's the moral of that story? It's that we're cared for. Mm. So all of this hinges on faith, too, which is another of those words, right? Mm. But we are cared for. I think the true value of waiting is really training uh, a pretty well screwed up human system, how to relax. It's, it's all about remembering what's natural. And once that naturalness is remembered and we find ourselves held in hands so much longer, larger than our own, um, we don't think about waiting anymore. It doesn't feel like waiting. It feels like a relationship to something. It feels like engagement. Um, it feels like an adventure. So waiting, I think, is actually a doorway. Hmm, I've never said that before, actually. It's just coming to me, but I think waiting is a doorway. It's a doorway that reconnects us to the vista of our own being. I think this is absolutely true. And I guess this would just bring us back to the experience of really feeling you know, feeling what we're feeling in this moment. Um, I think that's what really, what the waiting has really helped me create in my life or coming back into this, into this place where I can feel, I can really feel myself and I can feel what I'm feeling in the moment and really be present with my experience. And I mean, that is where everything opens up ultimately. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Man, I hope this stuff gets across. I've ne it's, hard, it's hard to speak about these things, mm -hmm. right? Isn't it? It's tough to find the words. Um, but I do hope this proves useful for some people. Yeah, I think, I mean, sharing some of the stories is always, always helpful. I'm, I'm hoping that that will help to illustrate some yes. of the concepts a little bit better. And maybe we can dive into this a little bit deeper even in future conversations. But I think just even feeling it, I think, you know, as you and I are talking, I think just feeling into that space and feeling the words, what's coming through the words, I think this will be yes. helpful too. Good. Were there other questions that you had that we have time to address or are we at our... Um, at our let's see. I mean, this is really <laughs> a huge topic. So I don't think we'll even be able to cover everything today, but I think we covered quite a lot of what I wrote down here. Let's see. Great. Um, developing trust. Hmm. Um, Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> and difference between waiting and procrastination. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think we covered pretty much everything. Cool. One way or another. And I know, is there anything else you'd like to share before we close this conversation? Um, two things. Um, first, I would love to invite anyone listening to leave comments like our last viewers did. Um, it's really helpful. And this is the beginning point of a larger conversation. Uh, oftentimes, it's the questions that come out of your heart and your experience that help to kind of stretch and expand the vision of what's possible for all of us. So um, I think would you agree that we welcome as many comments and questions as possible? Absolutely. It was actually the exact same that I was going to say next. So. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Also, I think this, for me as a generator and maybe for you as well, probably for you as well, this is always, you know, gives me something to respond to. 
I find that's mm -hmm. it's always really helpful for me to receive those questions too, because then that yeah. kind of gives me the next step. Um, Good. I mean, I, I love continuing the conversations always and, and really seeing um, the feedback and and connecting in this way. So definitely leave questions. Great. What's the second thing? <laughs> the second thing is I'm super excited about this mapping of these body keys. And um, it's time now, after having played it out for myself and a few close friends, it's time to start talking about it more. Um, so if, if that piece of this puzzle kind of resonated with any of you and you'd love to know what your chart tells me in that regard and what kind of um, keys I can deliver and formulas I can deliver for you based on that, find me on Facebook, um, you know, through any of the links that Anna includes in the description here, and let's talk about that because um, I, I have a very powerful feeling about the impact of this. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna be an important piece. So mm. that sounds amazing, and I will definitely leave the links to your websites again and to my own as well. If anybody Great. wants to reach out to me as well, and um, let's see if there's anything else. Hmm. Yeah, this has been a really, really interesting and insightful conversation. Yes. I don't even know if I have anything to add right now, but just wanted to say thank you once again for, for being here with me today and for this conversation, which, yeah, I think is going to be very helpful for a lot of people because it's one thing to understand the concepts and, and uh, another totally different thing to actually live the concepts and and i don't know how it, what it's been like for you but i mean i went into this journey just completely open not knowing of any of the concepts just yeah. you know feeling my my way forward and then through the experience kind of extracting the, the concepts more than the other way around um but i think it's always helpful to to listen to somebody who has actually experienced it and, and, and then seeing how it can be applied physically. Yes. And I mean, that's always been such an important part of my work too. Like I just, I mean, I, I love exploring the concepts and I, I love nerding out about yeah. things, but, but ultimately, um, well, I remember there was a time in my journey when I was so frustrated because I like I felt like I understood everything intellectually and spiritually, but it wasn't working in the physical. So that's been a really big part of my journey for many, many years, like really looking at how can I apply this and how can I make it tangible for people to understand. And so I think that's definitely the the value that I'm seeing in these conversations as well. And um and also, like, I, I really value your contribution to this as well, because I feel you've been on this journey as well. And Thank you, Anna. It's really helpful to see both of these pers perspectives. Yeah, it's an honor to be here. It really is. All right. Thank you so much. Oops. <laughs> Set my microphone. Thank you so much again for, for being here with me today in this conversation. And I want to say thank you to everybody who is going to be watching this video. And once again, please feel free to leave comments. We love getting comments and um, we'll definitely get back to you and maybe feel inspired to host another conversation about some of the things that come up. Wonderful.